And the reason why is this is because it is the fetish army and the fetish sycophants actually worked together uh, before patch 2.1. They were conflicting, so no one really wanted to run it. But now that we can get actually 23 fetishes on the field to play, uh, they decided to give it a try and uh, got some really nice uh, concluding results. So as you guys know, in the first video, we usually just go over the build and go over the items. So we'll just start off with the items. Uh, of course, we're going to use the Carnival Helm. Uh, I'd like to get a better one in the future than the 10% life, but it's better than nothing. But uh, Carnival Helm. You want one with Ant Vitality, critical percent chance in a socket, and your fetishes shoot a poison dart every time you do. If you've never seen it, let's go ahead and just go ahead and bring out the fetishes. And I shoot a dart, they shoot a dart. So you kind of just see how that works. All right, bring back up that. Uh, for the shoulder option, since we're gonna be going the version that uses the Zunimasa set, which I think is the most optimal, we're gonna be honoring Ogdol's chest. Again, you want an Ogdol's chest with Ant Vitality, Armor, and Fetish Army damage. Any stats of having 470 intelligence and 470, vi uh, 470 vitality or higher is fantastic. As you saw, I got some pretty nice rolls there. And you want to accompany that with the Og Hill Shirts with uh, poison damage, of course. And I got a real nice one here, 495 and 470 vitality and 5.5 crit. Hopefully in the future I can go back and make one that has 20% poison damage. Um, we also got the regular traditional necklace. Now I would love to actually have a Hellfire Amulet. And I told you guys this before. Uh, one with ant crit percent chance critical damage and socket <clears throat> or critical percent chance critical damage poison and socket but they're not easy to actually make um, any uh, hellfire amulet with one of the four passes I use in this build or uh, pretty much gruesome feast is pretty much fine because um, you really want to run gruesome feast with this build to give more damage output that would be probably be the most optimal thing to pretty much do uh, if you did get a nice Hellfire Amulet, but just a traditional necklace, Ant Vitality, I'm sorry, Ant Critical Percent Chance, Critical Damage, and Socket is fine. Uh, Zunimasa Maro, this one's pretty okay. I'd like the intelligence to be a little bit higher, but 490 Vitality, 439 Intelligence, good roll on the Fetish Army damage. That's more than enough. Uh, Tasker and Theo, now, uh, you can use any glove you want because it's, the interesting thing is, is when you run this build, is that you don't need Tasker and Theo because Tasker and Theo only affects it when your pets are actually meleeing stuff. The way it works is when you shoot darts is that since the fetishes only shoot darts when you shoot darts, what determines their attack speed is how fast your attack speed is. So if you don't want to run Tasker and Theo and you want to run another glove, that's perfectly fine. Actually, you probably should. But I will say this. Um, when my dogs hit when they're providing me leech life or then there's certain situations where I can't shoot darts when it's like on weird stairwells certain bosses with a certain reflectability or just when I have a waller and I can't really shoot the darts then letting them auto attack is the best option that's when Tasker and Theo will kick in when they do melee they will be attacking a lot faster so you might want to think about that uh, I think the best overall belt is the witching hour Good int, you want good int, good in vitality, it has attack speed and critical damage, really good for the build. Now, if you want to run Stringer AOs or something else and get more toughness, that's fine, but I would strongly suggest looking at other options to get more toughness into your build or just getting better rolls on your stats or using a combination of Horrify, whatever you got to do to get the Witching Hour into your build because attack speed is very important in the build because the faster you attack, the faster the fetish to shoot and it gives you critical damage. Um, it'll have int and vitality, plus when you have that extra attack speed and critical damage, it gives you options on what you can do with other pieces, part of your gear and what have you not. Um, the ring, of course, is going to be unity. No surprise here. You just want one good intelligence, good crit chance, and a socket. Um, because unity with my follower, of course, where she is wearing one, and then also the follower reddit. Um, so, for the most part, it's the uh, smoke and thurible. Uh, Equip and follow, your follow cannot die. So, I mean, that's a pretty solid piece because you need that with the unity and your unity to make it so you get 50% less damage. Uh, the other ring is the Ring of Royal Grandeur because we're running the Zunimasa chest, the Zunimasa shoes, and the Zunimasa string of skulls, which gives us the four piece set. And of course, with our two piece Aug Hilds, that just gives us our three piece set. So, Ring of Royal Grandeur, obvious choice here, it has attack speed, which is good for the build, which doesn't hurt it. Uh, critical percent chance and intelligence, so I was pretty happy, uh, happy about that in a socket. It's not too hard to get these if you need to farm them. Uh, Torment level 6, Act 1, Farming Caches. Pretty simple, easy thing to do. Um, until you get a perfect one, uh, it's pretty much, I mean, it's anybody can do it. So make sure you keep hunting until you can get one that has int, crit percent chance socket, and the attack speed. Uh, Swamp Land Waters, very strong uh, pants. 
Uh, you want it because it has poison damage, of course. Uh, this one actually rolled pretty nice. Ant and Vitality. Hopefully, I can get one that has more um, intelligence. Uh, I got mines with sockets. And uh, overall, it's a pretty solid piece. Um, gives you at lot of fetishes, uh, poison, or makes your fetishes hit a lot harder. Because whenever you shoot with the, uh, with the fetishes, even if it's fire property, or let's say these fetishes, these fetishes right now are physical property. When they shoot the darts, their damage gets converted to fi uh, poison. So um, any rune you run them, that's what's just going to happen. But it makes it very nice. Um, and that it adds a 20% increased damage, and it does make a big difference. Um, the shoes, of course, are Zunimasa. I'd recommend to get ones that actually don't have movement speed because you can take movement speed in your Paragon points and get an extra resistance stats on them. I was pretty happy about these. I'd like to get them 490, 490 on the bit in, in the future, but we'll see. Um, Zunimasa String of Skulls. You want one with good average damage. You want with Ant and Vitality and Crit and then Fetish Army damage because you can get a lot of Vitality on the offhand. and adds a lot of toughness, gives you a lot of survivability, so make sure you try to get one set up like this. Um, and the nice thing is it does have stun chance on hit. I don't know how I got lucky with that, but that was pretty cool. And then here's the biggest one is the Dagger of Darts. Uh, it makes the build run really good and do a lot of DPS because it turns all your darts from your fetishes and yourself, they now pierce. You want one with good base damage, good percent damage, and any socket. And that's pretty much about it. As for the skills, uh, we have Poison Dart Snake to the Face. We have Piranos and Paranato. Poisons the dart snake to the face is because, you know, since we have the dagger of darts, when we shoot off that snake, it does 185% weapon damage as poison, an additional 40% 40, 40 weapon damage as poison over 2 seconds. The snake has a 35% chance to stun the enemy for 1.5 seconds, as you can imagine when pierced the darts, that this is amazing. Uh, Piranos and Paranato basically puts everything on one area, so when you AoE, when you shoot everything with darts, it kind of just everything gets AoE down. Provides crowd control for the build, and it makes them take 15% more damage. Um, we have Spirit Walk with Jaunt. Pretty straightforward here. Leave your physical realm body in the spirit realm for 3 seconds. While in the spirit realm, your movement is unhindered. Fetish Army. Legion of Daggers. Uh, summon an army of 8 wielding fetishes to fight by your side. Now, I remember like I said before, even though these guys are physical, when you shoot the darts, they become poisonous. So it's just to be optimal, you want these 8 guys out. When they shoot darts, they'll do poison damage. It's 108% damage as poison damage. So you want to run the uh, Legion of Daggers. Now, if you really want to, you can run the Headhunters. Uh, but they don't get any bonus damage because it's already poison. Um, and then the two fetishes that you get, you only get seven fetishes as opposed to as eight. And the extra two fetishes shoot darts and they do less damage. Whereas this one has eight fetishes that do... 180% uh, damage, but the nice thing about headhunters, if your fetishes ever need to like auto attack in crazy situations, they'll do more damage because when if you have to let your legion of daggers do damage, it's going to be physical property. All right, now this one's kind of up to debate depending on what you want to do. I like to run summon dogs with leeching beast. Uh, gives me three dogs that are going to be out in the field of play. Uh, they add more tankiness to the Ori 23 fetishes I have out already. And the nicest thing is, is every time they hit, they give me 100% of my life on hit, which I don't think is too much. Let's take a look here. Uh, yeah, it's only 8k, but three dogs hitting for 8k each, and plus with the uh, with the uh, Tasker and Theo makes them attack a lot faster. So what actually eventually ends up happening is that uh, they give me back a lot of life. Believe it or not, in in crazy battles where normally I couldn't shoot at a reflect mob, since they're hitting the target, giving me back life, it makes it possible. Um, but that's up to you. Horrify, I would actually highly recommend because running this build and trying to get extra damage into the build, you need something that not only provides you CC and more armor with a Horrify, it can crowd control enemies. I can do Piranhas of Paranato, and right as they come out of it, I can Spirit Walk up and Horrify. Horrify knocks my toughness up to 13.6 million. Pretty solid skill. Uh, again, that is optional if you want to switch it out for Big Bad Root or something else. That's fine. I just do it because I like it a lot and it works well with the kind of skills I got going on. Pierce the Veil increases damage by 20%, and we're not really using a lot of mana, so that's pretty much obvious choice. Fetish Army, so we can get up to 23 fetishes all together between the 8 from the skill and uh, 15 from the passive. Grave Injustice to reduce the cooldown of our Spirit Walk, Piranha's Paranato, and our Horrify. And then, of course, Jungle Fortitude to add a lot more toughness. Um, now, if you've got enough toughness already, or you feel like you're having... $5 subscriber! More like a $5 footlong at Subway! Well, that was nice. Somebody just subscribed. Fantastic. Um... Let's see here. I'll have to highlight his name and put it down later. 
Okay. Um, what was I saying before? Scrap. Oh, um, you don't have to run Jungle Fortitude. You can run Gruesome Feast, but I really strongly recommend looking at Jungle Fortitude because it provides a lot of toughness and it makes your pets survive a lot more. And then, of course, uh, later on down the line, you might want to run Gruesome Feast as your extra passive if you get a Hellfire Amulet or a Spirit Vessel. Outside of that, um, I'm trying to think here. What was my place of thought? Oh, for your Paragon, like I said, you're going to get on the Zuni Mouse of Boots. You want the extra stat. You don't want movement speed. You can get movement speed in your Paragon. All the points into Intelligence. And then on offensive spells, it's uh, attack speed, critical percent chance, and critical damage. Now, you could play around with this how you like. Like, I can go ahead and take a look here. I'm running 59% critical chance, and I'm running 372% uh, critical damage, 1.78 attack speed. Now, if I really wanted to, and I probably should, is that I can put all the points into attack speed because I got a really good critical percent chance, put all my points into critical damage, and then just put the remainder points into critical percent chance. Because if we look back at our stats right here, okay, now I'm down to 56%, not a big deal, but now I'm up to 1.86 uh, uh, attack speed, and now I still got this so 372% critical damage. In the defensive tree, uh, first thing you want to get is armor followed by life percent, and then I start getting resist all. And of course, in utility tree, you want life on hit first, followed by area damage, the resource cost reduction. Now, for your uh, gems, uh, Bane of the Powerful, pretty much undiscussable here. 15% elite damage, 20% elite da uh, increased damage for 66 seconds, and that's only at rank 36. If you get up to like 40 or 50, or basically 50, it's like a lot longer. Um, Gugaka Swiftness provides us cooldown reduction, 81% chance to gain swiftness, and that increases our attack speed by 1% for 4 seconds. The effect steps up to 15 uh, times, so 15% extra cooldown reduction and 50% extra attack speed. Um, these two are pretty much non-negotiable in my opinion. Now for the third gem, you can do whatever you like to do. You can run the pet gem. I like to run the Ring of Royal Grandor, oh, I'm sorry, the uh, Gemotoxin, uh, Factious Toxin gem. I don't want to butcher that name like I did last week. And what it does is, with the Dagger of Darts, is every time it hits every all the enemies, it puts a Poison Dart on them. Uh, and it makes it so they take 10% increased damage from all sources, which is fantastic. And it applies a 4,000% weapon damage, uh, oh, I'm sorry, 4,000% poison damage over 10 seconds. And since we're building poison, the gym becomes a lot more powerful. If you'd like to roll in the Pet Enforcer gym, that is perfectly fine, too. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, again, that's your personal preference. So the Pet Enforcer gym increases pet damage by... Uh, uh, 25.80 percent at least at this level at 36 and then pets take 25 percent less damage uh, if you're not running jungle fortitude you might want to think about using the enforcer gym the enforcer gym is pretty solid the bane in the trap is also a nice one because you do have the uh, dagger of darts with the snakes of face which stuns that's another good one to do use uh wouldn't recommend using the zai stone of vengeance because it only affects your damage it doesn't work for your fetishes or for when i heard the fetishes have to be at a distance too but um, eh, just it was kind of lackluster. But if you want to run it in a group for the extra twenty percent chance to stun enemy for one second, it's a nice little CC option. Simplicity strengths again. It's only for damage. Um, for uh, what you do, it doesn't carry over to your pets in terms of their dart damage. Um, another one that actually is fairly decent is the Smite Gem, believe it or not, because uh, sometimes in the long fight versus the uh, Griff Guardians, the constant damage from the secondary effect of the Smite, and plus uh, with the proccing effect of the your, your, your darts, it actually adds up to a lot of damage. It's pretty solid. So you might want to even look at using the, that gem as well. Pain Enhancer is another good one, but uh, overall I feel pretty much uh, running the Bane of the Powerful the Gugaka Swift, Gugaka Swiftness, and then of course uh, the Gem of Infectious Toxin or the Enforcer is your best option. So I do believe that's pretty much it. We covered the whole uh, entry level build. As always, we are going to start at, we'll start at Keystone. And we'll start it at level one or whatever. And then uh, we'll see how high we can get Probably will break this video up into either it's going to be three to four videos. We'll see. Oh, better summon everything. Now, the first initial waves, you don't really need to worry about it. These golem guys are called stone slingers or basically earth guardian. Let's hope we don't see any of those, but if we do, I'll explain it. The reason why I don't like these big golem guys is because they have one of the most horrible skills that counteracts carnival. They reflect projectiles, and your projectiles of your fetishes are very strong. So when you come across those types of monsters, or the big those kind of golems that have that little circular or circular aura around them, 
you really don't want to attack them because it's going to reflect the damage back to your fetishes so it's best to let them reflect but at this low level it doesn't really matter and we're just going through the waves here really don't have to use piranos and Paranado just yet when it gets to wave 28 or so I will start using it but for now when everything just comes out we're just going to shoot everything down everything dies pretty fast because the attack speed, the poison darts, everything pierces through everything and we're on wave 29 so probably on the next one I will start using uh, Piranos and Paranato so we can start at a good level now I'm going to step back here. Now positioning is important. Drop the Piranos of Paranato, and then just fire into them. And then I should have actually walked up in a horror fight, but I mean it happens. I wasn't really thinking. So they're pretty dead. They're down. I think we got everything. And he was just doing that ability that reflects projectiles. We started at 30. That's not too bad. Um, the reason I don't like those golems is because, like I said, they have an aura that reflects, and it pretty much will shut down your whole uh, carnival build. So, just in general, I hope we don't see it. I know I can do pre I'm pretty sure I can clear 33. 34 is scup in the air, but uh, I'm pretty confident we can do 33, no problem. I know some people have gotten this build up to 36, <clears throat> but at least in my short time playing it for a week, I was able to get it up to 34, no problem. Uh, 33 it felt really good like it felt like it was a pretty solid run but then again like I said it really comes down to if you get stone slinger or not if you get stone slinger you will have a bad time if you don't get stone slinger you will have a fantastic time which is funny because he's usually one of the most easiest ones or one of the rift gardens you do want but you do not want it in carnival because it has that effect where it actually uh, reflects the projectiles back and is very bad so any loose. We're just running through the environment. And I don't know why I went to the dead end. You know, I probably should turn on game sounds because they make it a little bit more interesting. So we're going to try on game sounds. There we go. Hopefully it's not too loud. I don't think it will be too loud. Here we go. And you know what? Let me turn on the sound just a little bit. There we go. Hopefully we get some good mob density, but it's 430, so I'm not really too worried about it. 30, 31, 32, not really worried about it. 33, we're going to hope for good mob density, especially on 34 as well. And then you can do Piranhas of Paranato. And then once they come out of it, you can Horrify, keep them CC'd and finish them off. And that works out pretty well. But pretty much the golems are the weakness of the build. Not too much stuff can really mess up your fetishes too much because they're at a range distance and stuff. Waller is bad. Mortar is bad. Uh, reflect damage. Pretty much anything that you would normally have problems with any range class is a bad thing. But the nice thing about this build, I feel that this is not too hard to be attainable by anybody. Um, it's really not hard to get the items because you don't need a tasker like I said You only need dagger or darts and carnival really to get this build going And it's not like you need a star metal which is one of the rarest items in the game See now I got reflect so now what I'm going to do Is I'm going to try to move to the room horrify and then when they do that when they do the waller or whatever I just kind of let them auto attack because you know it's kind of pointless to try to attack them because you're just blocking your shots So I mean like I said it's a part of the build and it's a weakness but just let your fetishes just deal with it or you can like try to go in the room and just get up close and personal and just resummon them and stuff like that but I mean it's just it's the plague of the build it's the it's the waller it's just something you're gonna have to deal with I'm having a horrible time right here it's just bad RNG there's nothing I can do about it it's it's like it like I said sometimes it's absolutely infuriating but I mean it's just the weakness of the build if you run on a higher level greater risk and you come to Waller sometimes you're just utterly screwed and there's really not much you could do about it one thing I thought about doing is actually running Cooley Aid and what that does it breaks walls and what you do is you just pop the Cooley Aid you spirit walk through all the walls and you actually can just break the walls down so actually I should really be running Cooley Aid but I do like this one potion I'm running is that provides me armor every single time uh, I pop the potion and what have you not but Cooley Aid would be a good way to combat against Waller because, you know, as soon as you pop that potion, you just break through everything. 
and uh, the walls get dissipated easily. Or you don't get the spirit walk through them. Um, you just walk through them and they just dissipate very quickly. Even though it's for a small amount of time, that small amount of time can make a big difference in, instead of slowing down your run. So like I said, Piranha's a Paranato to get the increased damage on the target. And then I can come up and run Horrify with C Season. And he goes down pretty easy. So you can see we're running 30 at a real comfortable pace. Um, which is pretty solid. You know, it's not too stressful at all. Um, getting a carnival in the early season is pretty nice, especially to get your dagger or darts, because you can immediately do 27. And as long as you just work on upgrading your gear pieces one by one, the gear, the, the build will actually carry itself pretty high level. And it actually works really good in groups. The only bad thing about it in groups is just that it adds so many more fetishes on the screen. And I know they did make it so that when you're in group, it doesn't render the fetishes 100% all the way. But what happens is the 23 darts that you're spraying out, it's kind of like the same thing like a D8 Sentry. It's like when you have all that stuff spraying across the screen, it does bring down FPS and causes frame drops in group. But... Outside of that, I mean, it's not a big deal. It's really good at carrying. Um, I remember I was doing a lot of carry runs this week with the uh, Carnival. It can carry full groups on T6, just like, you know, the other high-end pet builds, which is nice. Now, since I have those dogs right here, that reflect damage is not going to hurt me too bad, but it is Waller, so it's a little annoying. Um, but, yeah, just in general, um, it's a good build I can carry. Um, I'd have to say pretty much Jade is number one, followed by the Tall Man's uh, pet build, and then Carnival is actually pretty much up there. I know next week I'll be doing we're gonna hopefully their build, so we'll see how that goes. And like I said, we're making really good pace. We might skip the 32 at this pace if we can just maintain some decent mob density, which we kind of happen. I'd like to see a little bit more mobs, in my opinion. Oh, good one here. Uh, if you get this guy as a Rift Guardian, <laughs> he's pretty bad. I think he's called Blood Maw. He's another one that's really bad for the build because he just kind of jumps and goes where he pleases. Actually, I think it's bad for any build, and he just shuts you down. Unless you're Jade. Jade, you have, you have no problem with it with Jade. So they went down pretty easy. Gruesome Feast, like I think, would be the next level of completing this build, getting it to max out. It's getting a nice amulet so I can run Gruesome Feast because the extra damage from the orbs would be very nice. There we go. And there we go. And we're doing pretty good. And we're doing pretty straightforward here. 30 looks like it's not going to be no problems. Yeah, everything looks pretty good. And there's really not too much... You know, for the build, I can't wait till they get rid of pylons like that. <laughs> That's, I mean, I like the pot. I mean, the damage is good, but it's like it has no place in Greater Ribs. But don't get me started on that. I don't like the power pylons. It just doesn't. It, like that's just to me. Like right there, that was ridiculous. You know, because like I said, if you guys watched last week, a lot of people what they like to do is they like to spam keys on a certain level. They'll get in a group, make like a hundred keys of a certain level, and just spam levels until they get a greater rift where they get certain pylons like that, and they can kind of cheese the rift. I, but they already said they're getting rid of it next season, so I'm looking forward to that. I hope they get rid of all of them because I really think when you're in a greater rift to make it more less random or you just spamming for like a rift that has like condo and shines and shit that it actually uh you know doesn't let you have that kind of stuff because that stuff can really affect rift runs especially if you get one right before a rift guardian it makes a big difference so like i said man everything's going pretty good with the dagger darts everything sprays i must commend blizzard on this weapon it really revolutionized the uh carnival play and it took the carnival build to the next level so pretty happy about that. And then see how the stun is? The stun pretty much locks down this big guy here, the uh, Mallet Lord. So we're looking pretty good. I got a buddy named uh, Malice now. He's one of my moderators in chat. And every time I see Mallet Lord, I'm thinking like Malice. Malice. But it's not, I don't know why I like link both those words together. But let me tell you, back in the day, Mallet Lords were horrible. So every time I see his name, I'm like, ooh, Mallet Lord. Malice, Mallets, don't like the Mallets. But, I mean, it's just something you have to deal with. They're not bad anymore. They actually... I don't know what they did to them, but they made it so, like, they can't one-shot the pets anymore like they did. All right, so now I cast Perons and Perinado. Then what I can do is come up, Spirit Walk, Horrify, put some on CC, and kind of just dance around the room. But as you can see, the uh, Poison build pretty much stretched through everything. And, um... I mean... 
I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Like, you can see, like, it's doing really good damage. The fetishes are not dying. Um, it was working well with the infectious uh, toxin gem. But like I said, if you want to use a pain enforcer gem, you could. Piranhas of Paranato, little CC. And then with the stun, the Piranhas of Paranato and the Horrify, you can just lock down a monster indefinitely. And it's really nice in groups, too, because, you know, bringing that Horrify in adds extra little double, uh, another level of death and CC to the build. And then every time you shoot out snakes to the face, it does pierce to all the enemies. That was pretty straightforward and easy. So we're getting some real good mob density. I hate fighting on even little stairs like this. If you ever have to fight on stairs, sometimes it's just best to let them auto-attack or just basically pull the enemies back away from the stairs and fight them. Um, there are certain rift maps that are pretty horrible that have like a lot of stairs. Uh, it looks like you're inside of a cavern. I forgot what the name of the rift level was. But you don't want to go to that one because there's a lot of stairs and it really can throw away the build or mess it up. But that's part of RNG you just have to deal with. You don't want maps that have a lot of stairways. You want everything to be like a flat surface so you can just roll through and kill everything. Like this one here. This one's pretty solid. And we're about to spawn the Rift Guardian. Oh, just got to it. That was not there. Horrified there. Now, I don't use Horrify as much as I should, but on higher levels, I actually end up do. There we go. Piranha's a Paranato. Focus him down. Then I can come over Horrify. Keep him CC. Hit him with the stun. Snake to the face. Back it up. There we go. And then this person, Rift Guardian, is here. Hopefully, it's not Stone Singler. I really don't. Good. It's the Man Carver. This guy's real easy. Now, the reason I also like Snake to the Face... Oh, this guy fucking... Uh, he walls. I forgot about that. The reason why I like Snake to the Face is because it stuns the Rift Guardian, which is real nice, and that will proc the Bane of the Trap, which is also... Real. Hopefully, I can keep him stunned for the most part. Getting your fetishes right up on him also might be a good way to combat the... Uh, the... The... Uh, Waller and stuff, but I really just don't like this guy. See, now they're still on top of them, you know, so now I don't have to worry about that. But, uh, this guy at higher level, you really don't want to get too close to anyway. He's a bad one to get at higher levels because he is really hard. And, like I said, the Waller thing, anything with Waller, so you can add this to a list of Rift Guardians you just don't want to get. We got lucky we got him at level 30. If it was anything higher, 34, you'd see me raging out and cursing up a storm. Alright, so that went pretty smooth. We had 4 minutes and 14 seconds remaining, so we're only going to go up one rank. I think that was a little bit due to the lack of mob density and also the Rift Guardian, so we go up to 31. So I'm going to go ahead and probably be cutting the video off here. When you guys come back, I'll be doing uh, 31, and then we're just going to keep running this until we max out. Hopefully on 31 we get some good mob density so I can skip the 33 or 34 and only have to do this in three videos, but uh, we will see. So... I will see you guys in the next video, and we'll go ahead and keep going.